Hey there racers and welcome to this week's video. Today I wanted to talk to you about something called the mundanity of excellence. I've talked to some of you about this before, but this was a paper written in the late 80s and it was about a guy who studied swimmers from the like most entry level to Olympians and he focused on the excellence of the Olympians and what makes them what makes them so great. And I'll put a link in the description to a PDF where you can access this whole paper. It's fairly long, but it's really, really good. And I would recommend everyone to read it if you can. Um, and to, to, to in the conclusion, he kind of summarizes what he talks about. And this is what I'm going to focus on as well. He says, number one, excellence is a qualitative phenomenon. Doing more does not equal doing better. Number two, talent is a useless concept. Number three, excellence is mundane, followed up with excellence is accomplished through the doing of actions, ordinary in themselves, performed consistently and carefully, habitualized, compounded together, added up over time. I'm going to read that one more time in case you didn't get it. Really pay attention and listen to this. Excellence is accomplished through the doing of actions, ordinary in themselves, performed consistently and carefully, habitualized, compounded together, added up over time. So as a cyclist, this is very, very applicable to everything, but also cycling. Um, to become excellent in cycling, in racing, in whatever you're doing, in mountain bike racing particularly, which is what most of you are focused on, it's accomplished through the doing of actions ordinary in themselves, number one, right? So this is things like getting out and doing your training and doing it well. It's, it's pretty ordinary in itself. Most people could go out and do a two hour zone two ride. Almost everyone can do that. It's not like it's a super challenging, Any anyone that's conditioned somewhat can go out and do a two hour zone two ride. It might be kind of boring though, it's kind of mundane, right? But it's, it, it's the people who can dedicate and do these training rides well. Or maybe you have reverse pyramid intervals. This is a really hard workout, right? Something that's going to continue to build your, your VO2 max and your ability to race at high intensity. And most people could go and execute these as well, at least one time. But it's it's how how can you continue to do it and do each interval well? So ordinary in themselves, performed consistently and carefully, right? So back to the reverse pyramid intervals example. If you're doing those carefully, right, and consistently, where each interval is done as it should be in the correct zone with the correct focus, um, and then habitualized, compounded together, added up over time. So where eventually you riding at an excellent level becomes a habit. This, this reminds me, I think it's Aristotle who said, um, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And this syncs up really well with, with what this person is talking about here. Um, okay, but this also talks, this is also more than just training. Let's, let's think, of, let's, let's run sleep through this. Okay. Excellence is accomplished through the doing of actions, sleeping, ordinary in themselves. Maybe this is going to bed at 9 30 PM. Okay. Ordinary. It's not, that's not, there's nothing exciting about going to bed at 9 30 PM. It's an ordinary task. Okay. Performed consistently and carefully, meaning maybe this means if you want to go to bed at 930 to be consistent and careful, you are going to put your technology away at 830 and start winding down. You're going to have a, a bedtime routine that will line you up to be able to go to sleep at 930. Okay. And then it's going to become a habit and compound it together over time. Boom. All of a sudden, after enough time and enough habit, you will be excellent at sleep, which will lead to being excellent at performance. Okay. Now let's run nutrition through the model. Um, Excellence is accomplished through the doing of actions ordinary in themselves. Maybe this is eating a really good breakfast, lunch, and dinner that gives you the amount of carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, everything you need to be able to perform well. And then perform consistently and carefully, meaning you don't have the weekend off, right? It means that you're consistently and carefully doing this all the time. Habitualized, compounded together, added up over time, right? You do that for six months you are going to be an extremely healthy person. Let's, let's, go, let's run bike maintenance through this, okay? Excellence is accomplished through the doing of actions ordinary in themselves, pumping up your tires, lubing your chain, 
deadening your suspension service. Right? These are very ordinary in themselves. Performed consistently and carefully, right? So it's actually making sure your chain is lubed and clean before race day and that your bike is clean and that your suspension's working well and that your everything's tuned and dialed. These are ordinary in themselves, but performed consistently and carefully, habitualized, compounded together, added up over time. This is this could be creating a routine where maybe every Tuesday before a race, you're going to bring your bike into your local bike shop and make sure it is completely dialed for race day, right? This thing is, it's very ordinary in itself. There's nothing exciting about that necessarily, but you do that consistently and carefully add it together over time and you will become excellent at having your bike stay in good shape on race day. Um... This is, this is really just like one of the most important things to remember. Um, it's super crucial to performing well. Let's, let's go back to number two then. Talent is a useless concept. Talent is a useless concept. This is so, so helpful to remember, especially if there's people in your race category or people you're racing against who you feel like you just, you're struggling to beat or struggling to, or maybe you just feel like you're struggling to race like, and you just, maybe you're blaming it on talent. Well, the research is clear. Talent is a useless concept. I'll read this paragraph to you. It says varying conceptions of natural ability tend to mystify excellence, treating it as the inherent, the inherent possession of a few. They, mu- they mask the concrete actions that create outstanding performance. They avoid the work of empirical analysis and logical explanations. And finally, such conceptions perpetuate the sense of innate psychological differences between high performers and other people. So what we find is that talent is actually just a word, a a phrase, a concept we use to excuse ourselves or to put them on a different level. We say, oh, they're just, they're just built different, right? Or they just have X, Y, and Z. And what we fail to see is what led them to have X, Y, and Z. When we look at it and break it down, we discover that it's actually very mundane. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's, it's not, it's not super exciting. Maybe it's that they're outside doing cornering drills every day for 15 minutes after they ride, right? The inherent nature of that isn't that exciting, but the application of it can be potentially. And we oftentimes think of the, the life of a professional athlete as some glamorous and exciting, um, exciting lifestyle but if like let's just take nino Schurter for example right the greatest mountain bike racer arguably ever right he's just i mean he has the most world cup wins the most world titles he's phenomenal and he, he's so good at what he does and the reality is he's not most of his life is pretty mundane most of his life is getting on the bike and riding in two three maybe four hours in zone two and then doing five by five minute vo2 max intervals and then it's going to the gym and doing strength work, and and then it's maybe going and seeing the his masseuse, and, and then eating a really carefully prepared meal, and it's doing these kinds of things, and then it's going to bed at, I think he actually, I think he actually goes to bed at midnight, but he wakes up at eight o'clock, so it's like it's dead in that eight hours of sleep every night, the consistency and the routine, it's not, he's not going to parties all the time, he's not he, I mean, I don't know, his life, a lot of his day-to-day activities are actually pretty mundane. And then it's, you know, getting in and off the plane and, and getting ready for race day. It's, it's meditation. There's, there's, it's yoga. It's stretching, right? It's, the, it's so many things compounded together consistently over time that are creating his excellence. Um, so talent, get toss it out the window. It's not, there's not, there's nothing uh, magical about people performing well. It's very... Step by step, they're taking every aspect of what they're doing and they're turning it into excellence. Um, You could even take, let's maybe let's just run like school through the model as well with this. So you think, oh, he's just gifted at math, which I'm not saying people don't have gifts. That's true. Some people may tend to be better towards certain things. For example, I was 4'11". I probably, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't line up with my strengths to go and try to play in the NBA. Um, this is also kind of the, the, the formula for, for high performance, which is, um, let's see if I can remember it's performance equals training minus interference. And so the interference things are also things you have to take into consideration, which could just be your natural gifts and talents. So there, I'm not saying those don't exist. 
But what I am saying is that the idea of people just being inherently way better because of some magical thing is incorrect. Talent only kind of gives you that that initial edge, the initial like kick in the right direction of maybe what you should be focusing on. And a lot of you have probably found cycling and light cycling because you kind of felt that nudge. It's something that you may be able to excel at more so than some other sports you could have tried. I definitely felt that way for me where I've, I've found that with my body and with my mentality and my the things I enjoy, I can tend better toward endurance sports. That's what I am perhaps built for. Not that I can't do other things, but that's maybe where just my initial talent lies. But the idea of me being really good at cycling isn't talent. That is the mundanity of excellence. Um, okay, so now let's go, let's go back to the first one then. Excellence is a qualitative phenomenon. Doing more does not equal doing better. High performers focus on qualitative, not quantitative improvements. It is qualitative improvements which produce significant changes in level of achievement. Different levels of achievement really are distinct and in fact reflect vastly different habits, values, and goals. So let's go back to the reverse pyramid interval example. The solution is not to do twice as many reverse pyramid intervals. The solution is to do the reverse pyramid intervals twice as well. Twice as well. Does that make sense? So each interval you're going to execute perfectly, or maybe it's 30 30s. The solution is not to do another set of 10 30 30s. The solution is to do the 30 30s very, very well. Because like he says, excellence is a qualitative phenomenon. Doing more does not equal doing better. And also kind of a bit of an asterisk here is you do have to do enough, right? If, if you only spend 30 minutes training a week, that's not enough. Even if that 30 minutes is excellent, even if it's really, really good, it's not going to be enough to allow you to perform well. So there is still, there still has to be the quantity. But what he's saying here is that the quality is far more important than the quantity. And this is something that you should remember. If, for example, if you have limited time and maybe you're not able to get a full workout in that day, focus on the most important parts of the workout and do them very, very well. And that is going to end up being the most beneficial for you. Um, so I, I, and I know kind of maybe be beating the bush here, but I'm going to again summarize these three things because this is something I really want you all to hit home and remember as you're racing and specifically as you're training. Some of the things I give you, like these two hour zone tune rides, the two hour medium effort, the spin ups, the cadence drills, they're they're honestly kind of mundane. They're not the most exciting of things. However, they are so crucial for you performing well. Um, and then think about it too outside of the things I'm giving you, like I talked about with what, how you're sleeping, what you're eating, um, you're stretching, your, I don't know, all these routines, your mind, your mindset mentality, it's all mundane, but it's going to lead to excellent. If, like he says in the last thing, you are carefully, yeah, if you are accomplishing actions, ordinary in themselves, perform consistently and carefully, habitualized, compounded together, and added up over time. Those, that will be the key to you performing well. Um, so think about it in everything you're doing, apply it and be, try to become excellent in, in something new today. I don't want to overwhelm you, but maybe, maybe today it's, it's the day you're going to choose that I'm going to become excellent in my post riding nutrition, where rather than come home and eat a donut or a bowl of ice cream, I am going to become excellent and get a good source of protein and re refill my carbohydrate stores. And I'm going to habitualize that and become excellent in my recovery process. So choose something. It could be your, your food, your sleep, your, your execution of training. You can maybe do a couple, but I don't want you to focus on too much. So maybe just focus on one or two at a time and try to build up from there. Um, and okay, I'm going to summarize these three now. So number one, the, the, these are this, this is the summary of the modernity of excellence. What leads to high performing people? Number one, excellence is a qualitative phenomenon. Doing more does not equal doing better. Number two, talent is a useless concept. And number three, excellence is mundane. I'm going to read this since I've already read it a thousand times, but I want to hit it home one more. 
Excellence is accomplished through the doing of actions ordinary in themselves, performed consistently and carefully, habitualized, compounded together, added up over time. I'll just finish this out because this is really interesting stuff. While these actions are qualitatively different from those performers at other levels, these differences are neither unmanageable nor taken one step at a time terribly difficult. Mary T. Mailer came to practice on time. Some writers always work for three hours each morning. Before beginning anything else, a business person may go ahead and make that tough phone call. A job applicant writes one more letter. A runner decides against the odds to enter the race. A county commissioner submits a petition to run for Congress. A teenager asks for a date. An actor attends one more audition. Every time a decision comes up, the qualitatively correct choice will be made. The action in itself is nothing special. The care and consistency with which it is with which it is made is. Howard Becker has presented a similar argument about the ordin the ordinary ordinariness of apparently usual people in his book Outsiders, 1961. But where he speaks of deviance, I would speak of excellence. Um, Becker says, and I concur. We ought not to view it as something special, as depraved, or in some magical way better than other kinds of behavior. We ought to see it simply as a kind of behavior some disapprove of and others value, studying the process by which either or both perspectives are built up and maintained. Perhaps the best surety against either extreme is close contact with the people we study. This was a lot. I went over a lot today. Um, and but I, I really am passionate about this idea of the mundanity of excellence. And I hope that some of you will or all of you will take the time to read this article because it's fascinating and it's it can be revolutionary in the way you train and in the way you focus on doing the mundane things really, really well. Because that's what's going to be the difference between the winner and the 20th place. It's, it's not a lot, but it's the consistently good things added up over time, habitualized. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thanks.